Hail and welcome. <laughs> so this is a video that I've been meaning to make for a while because I don't know about you, but reading romance after romance after romance can be heavily exhausting for me. And so occasionally one needs a break now. So I thought I would compile a quick list of all the books I have read that aren't romances this year. And it's not cheating, it's a break. <laughs> like, I don't know how, this, how long this is gonna go on for at all. I don't have a clue. I don't know whether I'm gonna like skim over these or whether I'm gonna talk about them at length. We're just gonna see where the mood takes us because if I don't sit down and do this now, I'm just never gonna do it. The first book I'm gonna talk about was, doesn't count as cheating because it was a gift. So, you know, I had to read it, and that is The Other Normals by Ned Vizzini. The person who got me this knew that Ned Vizzini was, had written one of my favourite books of all time, and that I hadn't read some of his other books, and so they decided to treat me for this one. And although it is more fantasy than anything that I would normally read, y'all know I've been looking for fantasy books recently, and this one really hit the spot for me. It kind of read out like a little fable. It's not really the sort of thing that I would normally read and so that's why I can't really analyse it as much as I normally would but it definitely gave me a lot of entertainment uh, and I would recommend it. I just love Nepazini so much. <laughs> Anyone who hasn't read It's Kind of a Funny Story needs to immediately. The next book doesn't count because it was a new release and obviously I had to read Why the High King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories because it's, you know, just this little companion novella to the Folk of the Earth series and it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> the pictures in it are amazing. I'll find one for you now. Look at this. Look at the beauteousness of this man. <laughs> the whole thing just made me want to read the series again, which is not a bad thing. The whole thing was wholly unnecessary, but it did give us a lot of insight into Cardin and why he is the way he is. So it is highly appreciated. And if you can get your hands on it, you should definitely give it a read. It's just such a beautiful book. Who does not appreciate reading a beautiful book regardless of, you know, what's going on inside it? <laughs> Um, so the next book is the first book that I like kind of chose for myself to read that didn't feel like it was out of necessity because you know sometimes when reading romances we feel like we're not getting a lot of substance and so we just need to read a good school shooter book. <laughs> this is Close Your Eyes by Nikki Clue. It's about the aftermath of a school shooting and it's kind of told through the medium of like interviews with survivors and also like newspaper articles and blog posts and things you know from like the police investigation and it's always interesting to read a book that's not laid out in like the stereotypical fashion that always makes it a little bit more interesting for me I like that I like it when we can play around with our writing style a little and see where that takes us we're gonna get a little bit into spoiler territory here so like you can skip ahead if you're interested in reading this but it has been out for a while so I feel I'm justified in wanting to talk about this. The way that it is told with the interviews and the police articles and stuff it, it reminded me a lot of Stephen King's Carrie and um, it's actually interesting that they decided to lay it out that way because the, the whole way through the book we don't know for sure, who exactly carried out the shooting out of this group of friends. And um, with the book almost feeling like an homage to Carrie, it's sort of a clue. And that's the only way I'm gonna get into it. And I've read this book before, by the way, and I read it in a day. So obviously it's very gripping. And as well, I was, I thought I remembered who was the culprit, but for some reason this book still made me question whether I was right or not. <laughs> and I thought that was really good because I, I do have quite a good memory um, 
you may not believe me on that, <laughs> but I do. And um, yeah, just the fact that I was like, do I remember this right? Is like, you know, credit to the author. It's a short book that really gets the message it's trying to portray across in that it really could be anyone and it's not always the stereotypical person that you would think that would cause such damage. Also there's a, a reference to incels in here which I thought was very strange and off-putting but is a very relevant subject even today. Never mind when the book came out, which was when? 2017? Like, I won't get into it, it's something that I'm quite interested in, but it is referenced vaguely in this book. Um, obviously we know that, you know, incels refer to people as like Chads and Stacys. Uh, in this book they call them Edwards and Bellas, which I thought was pretty funny, to be honest. <laughs> you can very clearly see the parallels between the incel movement and the movement that happens to be going on underground in this book. So the next set of books that I'm going to talk about is a set of books that I listen to on audiobook and that one day I would like to go into in more detail in their own video but for now it's kind of first response is always more emotional and then the second time you get into it you can put your English head on a little bit so I figure I'll just put it here and that is The Burn for Burn Trilogy by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. The reason I got this was because I listened to the audiobook of The List by Siobhan and uh, you'll be hearing about that in a different video but for now uh, th that obviously inspired me to read this because you know I love Jenny Han from when I was younger and I just wanted to see, you know, I love it when authors collaborate. I feel like it's something that we don't see nearly enough. And we definitely should. I love a bit of dual perspective and whatnot. I love all that shit. So why not? This one didn't really go with the dual perspective. Not in the sense of like first person POV, but it was, it was a really good read. This series was really, really good. I wasn't expecting to be as into it as I was with my kind of lukewarm relationship with Jenny Han as it is but I did really enjoy the list and so I wanted to give it a chance and I, I just really enjoyed this book. So the plot in book one, Burn for Burn, is there's this new girl at school called Mary and she like used to get bullied by this guy and she kind of teams up with these other two girls who want revenge against the same guy or people in his group of friends and they get together to do this whole revenge plot and it's a lot of fun and it's fun to see a book about a group of girls bonding and the group is actually quite diverse in personality and like you know the, the look that they have and the image they portray and the friends that they keep and things so it's always nice to see that it's always nice to read about female friendships but you can tell in this first book that something isn't quite right. There's almost a supernatural element to the book, but it's not really a prevalent theme. It's just something that you kind of notice in the background. It, it creates a lot of intrigue. <laughs> and the whole thing gets left on a cliffhanger when the revenge goes horribly wrong. <laughs> And it's all very exciting and we move on to the next book and we see the fallout and the consequences of all this fun that we had in the first book are coming back to haunt us and actually the girls are kind of regressing getting their revenge. We can also see in this book Murray getting weirder and getting more and more obsessed with the revenge. The other two are you know moving past the petty squabbles that they had in the first book and making relationships even with the people who wronged them but Mary seems stuck in the past and it's at the end of this book that, you know, the big twist comes about and we realise what this supernatural element is. So then the third book is all about subversion. Every character that we thought we knew <laughs> in the course of these books gets completely turned on its head and it's so great. But yeah, okay, I need to talk about the romance in this book because although in it, even listening to this book, I was not looking for romance. I was trying to get away from romance. The romance in this book is the most romantic thing that has happened to me in a long time. 
<laughs> and that is so sad. I am, of course, talking about Lilia and Reeve. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Like, they start out like she's getting him interested in her because everybody thinks that he's always had a crush on her and she is trying to use it against him to get what they want in the revenge plot. But obviously throughout the course of this, she learns that Reeve is not the horrible guy that she thought he was and she ends up liking him back and they end up having this whole forbidden romance plot that is so sweet and so intense and just the best romance that I've read in a long time. <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> if you have read these books, you know what I'm about to talk about, okay? You know that I'm about to talk about the epilogue that just gets thrown in your face at the end, that has nothing to do with any of what's just happened at the end of the actual plot. None of the relationships that were established still exist and Lilia, spoiler alert, is with Alex. What? What? Who is he? <laughs> I know who he is and as sweet as their little thing was, it just felt like the plan was that they should have ended up together from the beginning and so that's what had to happen. But that's not, you can't do that. <laughs> You can't spend like one and a half books building up a romantic relationship between two characters to have that relationship fall apart off screen <laughs> and her end up with someone completely different who nobody was really rooting for and who in my personal opinion should have ended up with Kat, just saying. I won't go on about it too much because like I said I would like to go more in depth about this if I could get a physical copy of these books but these have been some of the best books I've read this year. I've really, really enjoyed them. I, I, I love reading books about women. <laughs> I really do. And it is shameful how many I own aren't romances that are about women. Like, I can't even think of any off the top of my head right now. That was the Burn for Burn trilogy. I won't peck your head with it for any longer. Apart from this, I have attempted to listen to the Five Nights at Freddy's audiobooks <laughs> because like I used to love Five Nights at Freddy's and like I, I, I'm currently in the process of playing through all the games again but I'm on a break because I couldn't beat night five on uh, episode four so that's the shame the shame I was gonna like you know kind of do a little bit of a an amalgamation of a review of the books and the games and like just talk about the lore that uh, Scott Cawthon created throughout making these games and books and how it all added to this overarching story of the world, yeah? But then I actually listened to the audiobooks. I got all the way through the first one and it was bearable. And I got nearly all the way, I think I got to the second to last chapter of the second one and just had no motivation at all to continue with it whatsoever. I'd been pushing myself and pushing myself to get to the end of this book and then I told myself I could take a break and I just bailed right before the end. So as you can imagine my reviews of these books are not going to turn out very well but you know the games are still sick so it's fine. <laughs> There's a few more books that I've read that I have grouped together into a certain category that I will not divulge right now and that I will be filming a video for later this week. Obviously you know, well probably you don't know, but I've decided to take a break from my romance reads at the minute, but I did start reading Jaina and Ghost Girl, so I will have to finish those before the year is out in order to feel accomplished in myself. And apart from all this, recently I've received the most recent Holly Bourne release, which is, you know, great and I love that because I have been in such a reading slump, it is unreal, I feel like I've not touched a book in months and I have received the Heroes of Olympus books from my friend and I shall be, I'm thinking, I'm doing a reading vlog but it's slow going. <laughs> because, as I said, I am in a reading slump. So, 
now we're almost all up to date and I really want to just <laughs> I want to get on with it <laughs> I've been putting this off for so long and now that it's out of the way I feel like I can I'm cleansed of all these thoughts about these books that I have and now we can move on and we can start again and we can start reading again and everything will be fine and life will sort itself out <laughs> so from one friendless weirdo to another <laughs> I bid you adieu I hope you have enjoyed my ranting and my raving and I'll see you next time <laughs>